Artistry Online presents Guernica by Spanish painter Pablo Picasso. Picasso painted Guernica in 1937. Since 1992, the painting is hung in a specially built gallery in the Museo Reina Sofia in Madrid, the capital of Spain. The size of the oil on canvas painting resembles a mural painting, since it measures almost three and a half by eight meters. To understand the painting, we need to know about the historic context and Picasso's motives. Picasso was born on the 25th of October 1881 in the city of Malaga, in the Andalusian region of Spain. He also lived in Barcelona and Madrid. Picasso made his first trip to Paris in 1900, but already a year later he definitely moved to the French capital. Picasso always avoided being too political, even though already for years prior to the Spanish Civil War there was a political divide in Spain, eventually leading to this war. On the one hand, there were the left republicans, pro-democracy and the Spanish Republic. On the other hand, there were the right-wing nationalists, a rebelling group under the command of General Francisco Franco. These parties weren't just oppositions, they were enemies, demanding each other's annihilation. The nationalists eventually triumphed in 1939, and Franco ruled Spain till he died in 1975. When Franco attacked the Prado Museum in Madrid, in 1936, Picasso felt personally insulted. Suddenly, he was protective of his own ancestry, the Spanish artistic heritage. Picasso visited Spain for the last time in his life in 1934, but in 1936, he was assigned as the honorary director in exile of the Prado Museum in Madrid. By supporting the Prado Museum, he chose the side of the Republicans and took a stand against Franco. In January 1937, the Spanish Republic also commissioned Picasso to make a mural for the Spanish Pavilion at the World Fair of 1937 in Paris. Picasso immediately started sketching, but he changed his course after reading an article by journalist George Steer about the attack on Guernica. What happened in Guernica that startled Picasso? Franco wanted to save Spain from Marxism, the left-wing Republicans. And for this cause, he was willing to shoot half the country. Viva la muerte! With the Nazis Luftwaffe and the Italian fascists by his side, he attacked the Basque town of Guernica. This town was seen as the northern home base of the Republican resistance. On the 26th of April, 1937, in the end of the afternoon around 4 o'clock, Guernica was overrun with a three-hour-long bombing by German and Italian planes. Over 3,000 bombs were dropped on the defenseless town, turning it into an inverno. The citizens were unable to escape, since the roads and bridges were destroyed first, and every moving person was shot with machine guns. That day, 1,645 people died, and thousands were terribly wounded. Most of the victims were women and children, since the men were away, fighting for the Republican army. This brutal, terrorist attack was clearly a threatening message to the rest of Spain. With these historic circumstances in mind, we're going to analyze the painting. We can assume the painting depicts the bombing of Guernica. At first sight, it's a very dynamic scene with several human and animal figures in an unknown space, consisting of geometric shapes. Since the space is illuminated by a light bulb, because there's a table and the ceiling is suggested, the left side of the painting appears to be an interior. But the right side of the painting suggests an outdoor scene. We can see the outside of one or two houses. In the foreground, we can see several separated body parts of a man, his head and both arms, in one hand holding a broken sword. This defeated soldier is lying at the feet of a collapsing horse with a gaping wound, the central figure. On the left, there's a woman, overcome with grief, holding a senseless child. She's in front of a massive bull. On the right side of the painting, we can see a female figure, leaning towards the agonized horse. On the far right, there's another woman. She's screaming in front of a burning house, partly covered by blazing wreckage. From a window, a woman is curiously observing the wounded horse. She's holding a candle, even though the scene is already lit by an electric light bulb. Besides these figures, we can vaguely see a screeching bird on top of the table, and next to the hand of the soldier, a flower is noticeable. Remarkably, all the figures are portrayed en profile. Some argue the painting can be divided into three sections, in accordance with the tradition of the triptych, 
though it doesn't consist of three separate panels. Picasso applied very complex composition. There's no singular triangular composition. Picasso implied a plural triangular design as well as several obvious triangular shapes. The use of light within the painting is inseparable from the composition. The light source dictates the main triangular composition, following the light from as well the candle as from the light bulb. Even though the triangular design derives from the light sources, it leads the eyes of the viewer to the central figure, the horse. It also connects elements on opposite sides of the canvas. The obvious triangular shapes can be found throughout the painting, on the right of the horse, in the mother and child, and in the woman in flames. You can probably see more triangles, since the painting is full of geometrical forms. Actually, we can state that all the figures are formed by triangles, or are posed so they form a triad. For example, we can distinguish triangular forms in their noses, tongues, the women's hair, their breasts, in the hoofs of the bull and the horse, in the wound, the bent knees, etc. By repeating triangular forms, as well in the main design as in the figures, there's not only a sense of unity in the painting, it also fortifies the suggested movement. Within the composition, also the bull is emphasized. Several lines derived from the bull are moved towards it. It's remarkable that there is not a single, but a variation of perspectives in this painting. Besides, there's no clear background, horizon or whatsoever that forms a spacious surrounding for the placement of the figures. We can hardly distinguish a background. The disproportionate figures, especially their faces, are dominant in the picture. Even though the triangular shapes create a sense of space, distance and movement. It's difficult to outline the fragmented figures, but there is some overlap noticeable. The mother and child partly overlay the bull. The soldier overlaps the horse. This overlap also contributes to the spaciousness in the depicted scene. The use of variation in perceived depth, the fragmentation and deformation of figures, and the use of geometrical shapes are characteristics of Cubist art. Because of the repetition of triangular shapes, the use of several perspectives, the lack of background, the dominant faces, the overlapping figures, and the enormous measurements, as the viewer, you'll feel like you're there in Guernica, in the middle of the painting. As you've probably noticed, the color palette of the painting only exists of black and different shades of gray. There appears to be some use of white, but that's a really light gray. Picasso created a contrast between the dark background and the light figures. The contrasting colors create the lines of the composition we've analyzed before. Most interpreters agree Picasso probably used black and grey since it's appropriate for the severity of the subject and to express pain and chaos. Some say the stark monochromatic colour sheen gives the painting the appearance of a newspaper photo. The vertical strokes applied on the horse seem to constitute a newspaper print. These apparent references to newspapers could be a reminder that the depicted scene is a current event. A newspaper article made Picasso aware of the events in Guernica. Newspapers with black and white photos were the main source of information at that time. Some say the newspaper elements were giving the painting the same sense of truth and horror as the newspapers had. Some art historians attribute self-reference to the color scheme and newsprint, since these are recurrent in Picasso's early Cubist art. Though we've only pointed out some Cubist elements, the painting is seen as a synthesis of Cubism, Surrealism, ancient art and Picasso's personal pictorial preoccupations, not only concerning its style, but also its symbolism. There are many attributed meanings, and Picasso himself has made several statements about the meaning of the painting. About Guernica, Picasso said, my whole life as an artist has been nothing more than a continuous struggle against reaction and the death of art. In the picture I am painting, which I shall call Guernica, I am expressing my horror of the military caste which is now plundering Spain into an ocean of misery and death. Just like most of Picasso's work, the precise meaning of the imagery in this painting remains ambiguous. Any symbol can hold many and contradictory explanations. Asked to explain its symbolism, Picasso said, It isn't up to the painter to define the symbols. Otherwise, it would be better if he wrote them out in so many words. The public who look at the picture must interpret the symbols as they understand them. He also said, If you give a meaning to certain things in my paintings, it may be very true, but it's not my idea to give this meaning. 
what ideas and conclusions you have got i obtain too but instinctively unconsciously i make the painting for the painting i paint the objects for what they are nevertheless we'll be considering the common interpretations of individual picture elements as well as the entire scene some of the picture elements seem to originate directly in the events of Guernica, the suffering caused by the bombing, defenseless people and animals. But most motives seem to have an allegorical or ambiguous meaning. The main characters, the bull and the horse, have contradictory interpretations. Picasso himself used these characters to play many different roles over time, which makes its explanation unsure. On the one hand, the bull is seen as the symbol of the traditional Republic Spain. The bull as the unofficial national symbol of Spain, and bullfighting as a typical Spanish tradition. It's inevitable to consider a nationalistic meaning of the bull. The painting depicts several elements that are featured in traditional bullfighting art. A bull, a horse, and a man with a sword or spear, the matador. Later on in his life, Picasso actually made sketches featuring bullfights. The bull, the horse, and the matador might be present in the painting. They're nothing like the usually victorious matador and the slaughtered bull. In this case, the man is slaughtered, his weapon is broken, and his horse is suffering. Though the bull is not triumphing his victory, he remains peaceful, rather stoic. In case of this interpretation, the bull is the symbol of Republic Spain, still standing, even after a brutal attack like in Guernica. The horse then represents Franco's nationalism, Picasso predicting its downfall. On the other hand, the bull is interpreted as the brutality, and the horse as a symbol for the people. This seems more likely to me, since the horse is wounded and grouped with the other victims, the citizens of Guernica. Some interpreters think there are hidden symbols in Guernica, which are favoring the bull as the evil enemy. For example, the hidden bull, overlaying the horse. This bull assaults the shrieking horse with his head and horns. There's also an arrow visible, not hidden, but neither obvious. This arrow points towards the mother and the bull actually crossing the bull's genitals and the mother's breasts. In some of Picasso's sketches for Guernica, there is sexual violence. The bull is raping the female figure. The dying horse representing the senseless death of the people without any hope is a disturbing idea, though Picasso added the sign of optimism in the lower center of the painting, a single blooming flower. But this blooming flower also points out that life and hope is fragile. A third considered meaning of the bull, opposed to the other figures, concerns the conflict of gender, the ongoing friction between the masculine and the feminine, an assumpted reflection of Picasso's personal life, Picasso versus his lovers. At the time he made Guernica, he was involved with three women, his wife and two lovers. Conclusively, it's ambiguous whether the bull and the horse represent the nationalists fighting the loyalists, Franco versus the Spanish people, or if they represent the main characters of Picasso's personal battles, or both. The bull can be the aggressor or the pacifist, the bad or the good guy, depending on which interpretation the viewer applies. Perhaps there is no evident enemy in the painting, and all subjects are victims. The conflicting interpretations challenges the most basic notions of war as heroic. It might purposely focus on war as a brutal act, perhaps even of self-destruction. Besides the bull and the horse, the large lamp is a significant picture element. Some say it represents the sun, an earthly light source, the glimmer of hope, though it is clearly an artificial light, an electric light bulb. The comparison of its form to the shape of a human eye seems plausible. In that case, it could represent the eye of the painter, showing his perception of the event, or even the eye of God, gazing upon the human cruelties. In my opinion, it's more likely to represent the evil eye, the eye of the death squad, the targeting bombers, aggressively flickering. Under this flashbulb, the people of Guernica are consumed by chaos, pain, and death. Coincidentally or not, the Spanish word for electric light bulb is very similar to the word bomb in Spanish bomba, namely bombillo. The electric light is sometimes compared to the lantern in Francisco Goya's painting El Tre de Mayo, the 3rd of May. This painting depicts the execution of rebels in Madrid in 1808. The square lantern illuminates and blinds the victims. They can't see the faces of the cowardly executioners. The interpretation of the electric light bulb as an evil eye is justified by the opposing candlelight. The woman carrying the candle is commonly interpreted as the light bearer, the bringer of light and joy. 
then the juxtaposing of these two light sources indicates the battle between good and evil franco against the people maybe even war versus art and it seems the candlelight is winning since it seems to be a stronger light source being the exact centre of the painting horizontally and dictating a strong line that's part of the composition some interpret the woman at the bottom right as a symbol for the hope of peace they say that despite her leg injury she continues to pursue the light the ideal of freedom and peace the woman with her deceased child strongly resembles the christian motive of the pieta mother mary cradling the dead body of christ but in the context of the painting it is more likely to be linked to mater dolorosa in spanish art the image of mater dolorosa mother of sorrows has been depicted frequently this figure is a woman mourning for her child who has died looking upwards with tears in her eyes the woman causing flames is often discussed as a reference to el tre de mayo by goya like the central figure in goya's painting the woman raises her arms to heaven forming a cross el tre de mayo was a message of resistance to the oppression guernica could be seen likewise though the woman isn't fearless and proud like goya's hero of resistance her eyes are shaped like tears she's afraid and suffering the soldier is mostly seen as a symbol of the defeat of the people his broken sword points out his determination his willingness to die for his values but it also symbolizes the unfair fight the inequality of arms the republicans did not have the access to the same military resources as the nationalists possessed Concerning the soldier, again the comparison to El Tre de Mayo by Goya is made. Both men have puncture wounds in the palms of their hands, the stigmata of the martyred Christ, both with their arms wide, like a crucified Christ, dying a salvacious death. Opposite, they who interpret the bull as the Spanish people see the soldier as the defeated opponent and the broken sword as the symbol of peace. Some construe the bird on the table as a dove, a universal symbol of peace. But this bird, or the peace, isn't clearly visible it's fading this could mean the prospect of peace is far away or that it's possible but fragile like the flower the main theme of guernica seems to be death some are convinced a hidden symbol is reinforcing this they think that a hidden skull in the center of the painting influences the viewer's subliminal impression the skull is shown sideways like all the depicted figures and can be subtracted from the body of the horse in addition, it is said that the mechanical appearance of the skull is in accordance with the modern weaponry used in the bombing of Guernica. This is a precarious assumption, since the entire painting can be classified as mechanical, because of its cubist imagery. Even though the symbolic meaning of the distinct images is ambiguous and discussed, we can state Guernica can be classified as a war painting. The painting depicts Picasso's interpretation of the horrors of war, specifically the attack on the town of Guernica. It is seen as a billboard size anti war image. It's an intense painting that doesn't just tell about the attack on Guernica, it makes us feel it. But the painting isn't just a war painting, it's also a synthesis of the excitement of modernism, Picasso's obsession for art of the past, and his personal experiences with love and grief. What makes Guernica such an outstanding work of art is the combination of its monumental measurements, the purposeful composition, the monochromatic color scheme, the cubist imagery in the context of a political painting, and the ambiguous symbolic meaning. At the World Fair in 1937, many viewers were repulsed by the directness of the painting, and the fact they couldn't really point out the bad guy in it. The picture didn't conform their notion of a political painting. Picasso responded, I paint this way because it's a result of my thought. I have worked for years to obtain this result. I can't use an ordinary manner just to have the satisfaction of being understood. Nowadays, Guernica is seen as an icon, as the first truly modern history painting. During the Second World War, Picasso lived in Paris, even though the German Nazis occupied the city. Picasso was often arrested by the Gestapo. During the search of his apartment, they found a photograph of the painting. They asked, did you do that? Picasso replied, no, you did. After the World Fair, the painting traveled across the world, finally being on display in the Museum of Modern Art in New York for several years. Picasso stated he didn't want the painting to enter his native country until Franco's regime had fallen. Unfortunately, Picasso wasn't able to experience the end of the dictatorship, since he died in 1973, two years before Franco did. In 1981, on occasion of the centenary of Picasso's birth, 
Guernica finally arrived in Spain. Since 1992, its final destination up until now is the Reina Sofia Museum in Madrid. Thank you for watching this video by Art History Online. For questions and requests, please comment.